Karen Neve Wrynn is conductor in training with the RTE Philharmonic Choirs and Orchestras. And she's going to tell the story of last July when she made her debut conducting the RTE National Symphony Orchestras at the tender age of 27. She was interviewed before that debut, and I thought this answer to the question gave very deep insight into her vision as a leader. She was asked about how she felt before the debut, and this is what she said. For me, the work began months ago, sitting with the pieces, living with the team, theme, and allowing the music to live in my head. As a conductor, we practice in silence with all this wonderful music in our heads. I'm so excited to make music with the orchestra and to share it with the audience. I'm thrilled, honored, and excited. And so is the music. Here she is at her debut. Making music with no instrument, Karen Ibrahim. Hi, everyone. I still get chills when I watch that, but I usually have my back to you, so I'm not used to, to looking out at all of you. <laughs> um, this happened actually almost a year ago. July, at the beginning of February, I was hauled into the office. I was sitting, I had taken up the position in November, and so I was quite nervous, sitting in the National Concert Hall. It was concert week, which means you're, you're on call all week, 12, 14 hour days. And it was about nine o'clock at night and I'm sitting there taking notes on, on the rehearsal. And the manager came over and he said, we'd like to speak to you in the office at coffee. I said, oh God, <laughs> my foot's only in the door, what have I done? So I went down and, and short version of that, as they said, we want to promote a young artist this year, young Irish artist, and we'd like if you'd if you'd take the lunchtime concert this year. So naturally I was excited, very, very nervous and didn't know what was ahead of me. Um, sort of in a, a funny position in that I knew a lot of the orchestra, I'd taken lessons with these people and that made it harder. I knew that everybody that I was gonna face was older, had so much more experience, combined hundreds, thousands of years more experience, had played these pieces, knew these pieces better than me at that point. And that's when the work started from February until I signed the contract in May, I stayed tight-lipped and I just studied, 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 studied. So it's a funny form of leadership because actually you really only lead for two half days. In my case, two half days. I went in Monday morning at 10 a.m. in July. I finished at quarter to one and I went in Tuesday at 11 and the concert was baton down at one o'clock. That was it. Live broadcast for Lyric FM. You have, whatever, six hours to get the no to know the orchestra and it's make or break. So I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you an example of what that's like. So I'm going to pretend that, that you're my orchestra. And over on this side, you should sort of be in a semicircle, but imagine if this half of the room are my first violins, and I have my second violins here, and you're my violas. I have my cellos over here, and then you guys at the back, I've got my, my woodwind and my brass who always have books with them because they know it's going to be a long rehearsal. <laughs> and sometimes they're very hungover. <laughs> they're over in that corner. <laughs> And uh, I have my percussion down the back. <laughs> and I had this lovely triangle player right in the back corner. And uh, I'd been practicing this. And I said, I know when the triangle cue is. And he hid it. So I'm conducting away. And I'm looking at him. I think, you should have a triangle. And you don't. But I'm not going to panic. <laughs> and I keep going. And right at the last minute, he popped it up. <laughs> so I'm faced with this this day that's approaching on uh, July 10th was my first rehearsal day. So for, for the months beforehand, I have to sit with these pieces of music. I was in a really nice position where they said, would you like to pick the pieces? And I thought, okay. And they said, well, if you can come up with a theme for the concert and we can sell it, let's go with that. So I came back to them a couple of weeks later and I picked one piece I really wanted to do, which was at the end of the piece you just saw, Wagner's Meister Singer. And I themed all of them through music. They liked it, and so I spent months and months and months studying. 
So I brought this today because I feel comfortable standing on stage with a baton. <laughs> Normally this way, but how and ever. And it makes nothing. It has no effect whatsoever. I could wave this throughout this whole speech and, and it does absolutely nothing. And when you go into the orchestra, if they decide they don't like you, it still has no impact. <laughs> so you, it's, it's really, really very intimidating. We were always told in our training, you have 30 seconds. And if they don't like you, they decide straight away, we're not doing this. For them, it's a very small concert. So the National Symphony Orchestra do most Friday night concerts. They often do other events, but their big one is a Friday night concert. They're, they're doing a big one tomorrow night, Beethoven 5, with their new principal guest conductor, Natalie Stutzman, which will be huge, probably a sad out. And for them, you know, that's one of the peaks of, of their year. My one, they were getting their summer holidays in two weeks' time. They've just been seconded to go to China for I think three days and doing five concerts. So they really weren't thinking about me. They wanted to get in, they wanted to get out. So I'm there and I've learned all of this. It's all swimming around in my head. And so my first violins are over here. I have a very important person on my left hand side and that's the leader. So in an orchestra, we've got a leader of first violins. They're also the leader of the entire orchestra. So they're paid a little bit more, they tune up the orchestra they're sort of the step between that and, and, and management, really. And if anything's going wrong, you speak to the first violinist. If they don't like the conductor, they follow the first violinist. So if they've decided, you know, God, she's not great, they will let me look like a windmill and move my arms, and they will follow the first violinist. And you know that you're standing there looking like a windmill, but you've been paid, so you have to get through to two o'clock until that broadcast is over. So for me, uh, I had a lovely, my old clarinet teacher was, was sitting down the back of Woodwind, so he was really rooting for me. But the leader got sick a couple of days before the concert. So everything was sort of pinned against me. And they brought over this guest leader, who was a really lovely man, David was his name. They'd never played with him before. So the orchestra are now being conducted by this young girl up from the country, sure what would she know? <laughs> and also this leader who they've never met before. And then I walk in, and each section has their own leader. So here over with my cellos, there's a principal, there's a principal violist, principal second violinist, and each section, woodwind, brass, and percussion, have their own section leaders. So they'll defer to them. They'll say, what did she say there? What did she mean? What should we do there? What do you think about that? And all of these subcommittee meetings are going on while you're there. So having done all the preparation, I walked out into the podium on Monday morning for the rehearsal and I was so much more worried about that than I was the actual performance. So I stand there and I'd met David in the dressing room 10 minutes beforehand and he said, oh, hello, Karen, really lovely gentleman. Do you conduct here often? I said, no, it's my first time. <laughs> he said, me too. So we went out together, but he, he was fantastic. And, and luckily for me, it went very, very well and, and the, leader was absolutely fantastic and everybody really really loved him and for me the music went really well however when you do stand out there if you do have those 30 seconds and they don't go well that's your career gone you might get another gig in the uk in a couple of years time you might go to the states and you might get it there but in ireland there are two orchestras the rt symphony orchestra and the concert orchestra and if they don't like you, that's it. There aren't enough gigs for you to get any more. They say, well, we gave her a shot. You know, God love her, she did her best. And that's it, you're not called back. So everything was, was landing on this. And it wasn't all plain sailing. I got out and I conducted. And about halfway through the first day, I had rehearsed this little section loads and it wasn't coming together. And the leader said, David said, um, Karen, that's, we're not really playing that together. And I said, I know, bear with me. So I took it apart and I, I said, first, so let's do this together. Let's just take the woodwind on our own. Okay, thank you. Brass, yeah, that's great. Now, ladies and gents, can we put it together? Let's try again. And here we go. And it was still out. And we all knew what was happening, but I couldn't say anything because it was my first concert. I wanted to be asked back and I didn't want to be too controversial, I suppose. And the leader said, don't worry will play with you. And what was happening was the brass had decided for some reason we're going to play behind your beat, which I'll show you now in a second. But when I put down here, actually, let's try this. Everywhere you see a click, I want you to clap. Keep going, come on. 
Now I'm going to change it. Can you see what I'm doing? So I was doing all of this, and it was having absolutely no effect on the brass. And I thought, well, that's just one battle you're not going to win today. Keep going. And the, the principal trumpeter put up his hand and he said, um, Karen, are we a little bit behind there? And I said, yes, you are. And he turned to the whole team and he gave them the eye. And from then on, it was plain sailing. But you have 70 people, 80 people in that orchestra. And it just takes one person to go against that and to take it all back and, and not, let, not let the music happen. But for me, it happened and it all went all went very, very well, which was a great achievement for me, but knowing that you've got that 30 seconds on your shoulders is huge. There's another lady um, who's huge in the conducting world who I will have the pleasure of studying with this summer. You may or may not have heard of her. Her name is Marin Alsop. She was the first lady to close the BBC proms in 2013. She's an American woman, and she's really flying the flag for conducting all over. And the highest point of her career she was asked to take on this orchestra in America, and she was absolutely thrilled, Baltimore. And the orchestra, on her first morning, sat down and said, we don't want her. She hasn't yet signed her contract, we don't want her. We know that you've picked her, we're not having her, sorry. So this woman, like me, is walking in, God, this is great, you know, highlight of my career. And she had to go in, and she sat with the orchestra, and she said, you're millions in debt. You don't like me. I've taken this position, I want to do it. I will clear your debt, I will raise the profile of the orchestra, I will make sure that concerts are selling out, and I will reach out to the community. And she walked out of the room, she didn't even wait for a response, and before she'd made it to the door, the leader, again, this will show you the impact the leader has, the leader stood up and said, Miss Alsop, we'll take you. That should have been, you know, she was at this stage in her 40s, that should have been, biggest part of her career, she should have been so excited and instead she was going in facing 80 people that did not want her there. This orchestra were, they were heading off, that was it, if, if it didn't work they were going to end up in so much more debt and they would never recover. And so for her, she went in and she said, okay, here we go, I'm going to reduce all tickets to $20 across the whole season. I want community involved. I want scholarship for children on the streets. I want you all to mentor somebody and I want you really to mentor them. I don't want you to do it half-heartedly. I want you to take a child and visit that child in the community for an hour a day and I want you to take them under your wing and bring them in. Why, why always is it this big thing that orchestra and classical music is associated with snobbery? It shouldn't be. We've all seen Jenny Green and the RT Concert Orchestra rocking it out at Electric Picnic, you know, it should be like that. It shouldn't be, there should, shouldn't be this snobbery. So she started this scheme and the first day of sales, say for example, if we have a, a September sale and we're, we're selling tickets from September to May, they will go on sale maybe April, May, and the ticket sales were around the corner. People were queuing on the streets to get these $20 tickets, and she said, well, they're out, it's cold today, it's not a very nice day, I want everybody that's in that queue to have coffee and donuts. So she went, and she went and got them all coffee and donuts, and she said, you're not rehearsing today, let's rehearse, let's rehearse outside, let's show them what it's like. And so she made everything so much more inclusive, and from then on, that orchestra has grown and grown and grown. But just to go back to what we really do, when we're doing this, we have no sound. If I was here, I'd be very rude today, but my back would be to you, and my focus is entirely on the orchestra. I have to know when they need me, I have to know when they don't need me, and I don't speak. Every action that I have has a reaction. So I go in and I conduct for whatever, an hour and a half, and then they get coffee, and all I should really say in that time maybe three or four sentences. Ladies and gentlemen, you weren't doing that correctly there. Let's just try that again. Is it written in your part that you have to play that soft? Can we just remember to do that softly? Thank you. And over here, oboes, that was just a little bit south of the note. Can we try that again? Let's keep going. Great, thank you. And we, we continue. I have to trust that every single person in that room has more experience, has played the music at least five times more than I have, and in this case, they really had, and that they know how to do it. However, I am directing the ship. 
and I'm showing them where to put it, but I put my trust in them that they're going to do it correctly and together we're a team. Thank you.